I want to talk about the topic of equanimity. Uh, I spoke about this earlier on my channel, but it's such so important of a topic that it warrants more discussion. So let's say you have a set of preferences. You have A, then you have Z. You prefer A and you don't prefer Z. That's fine. You can have a natural set of preferences. It can come from your instinct. It can come from your heart. Then your life will tend more towards A. But what happens when Z becomes inevitable? What happens when Z ends up populating your sphere of experience more and more than you would like? And you can't avoid it. There's no way to get out of it. Let's say Z is old age and A is being young. Initially, of course, you can populate yourself with A being young. But as time goes on, Z comes in, old age comes in. What do you do? Well, you can't reverse age <clears throat> in any truly realistic sense on the physical plane. What do people do? They get all sorts of plastic surgery, all sorts of uh, unnatural things to make themselves look younger, many of which end up making them look unnatural, like when they get Botox and stuff, right? And then the lines and stuff and their, their, their face gets frozen in place, they can't express normally. They become a different person as a result of those things because they're so fixated on being youthful that in their old age, in the, in the quest to be youthful, they look very unnatural. So they look worse, they look even more old, and it's a joke almost. What happens as a res that's what happens as a result of not being able to transition the wants of your life to meet the actual reality that's presented to you, the immutable and unchangeable reality. And this is where equanimity is important. From a certain standpoint, there's no difference between A and Z. A is one letter, Z is another. Young life is one experience of life. You're cared for, your baby, your kid. Old life is another. And maybe you're also cared for, or maybe you're not. It could happen too. Whatever it is, it's, it's all part of a natural lifespan. And one is not inherently necessarily better than the other. To a culture and a society that values youth, then being young is more important. Now, I'm not saying to uh, overlook or un not do things like take care of your skin, work on aging gracefully by taking good care of health and hygiene and uh, diet and skin product and so forth, right? Things that are natural, at least. I'm talking about the inability, inability to accept where you are when Z or old age ends up coming into your life. And it's natural. And anything that's natural, ultimately, is good. Because uh, there, it, it's not, it, you, your mind can't fixate on his preferences forever. And if you're identified with being a young person, if you're identified with whatever the exuberance of youth and, and whatever brings, Z is gonna be, old age is gonna be very difficult. Very difficult in a way that's not natural because you're fixated on the past, fixated on recreating who you were in a way that's not healthy. So for people who can't let go of the image, can't let go of who they were, old age is hellish and it's suffering. The letter Z is horrific, the last letter. It's to be avoided. It's to be manipulated against. It's to be hid from the world. But for people who can allow this to be an opening into transcendence, allow this, this seeming uh, change in form or decline in form to be a, a, a gift. A gift because it allows you to dissolve your mental concept of yourself more. It allows you to dissolve whatever is false about you more. And at that current moment, if you're old and you think you're young, that's false at that moment. And if you're young and you think you're old or you think you're younger than you are, that's also false. So it's a matter of being in realistic synchronicity with the world and with the universe. And that takes an element of equanimity because in all the comings and going, all the comings and passings, uh, they're all temporary, every single one of them. I've had a bald head before because I shaved it. Right now my hair is long, right? So who am I? Am I the long-haired person or am I the bald person? Well. It depends on when you're talking about. I used to be 20, now I'm 28. I'll be 36 in eight years, you see? 
I've done a lot of things. I used to be a student. Now I'm a, right, right now I'm talking about spirituality and equanimity. I've changed tremendously. Every form that I've been has been an expression of something. And then I've moved along naturally, as everybody does. There's nothing special about that. The specialness in any person arises, though, when they're able to let go. Let go of the past relationship. Let go of the past image. Let go of whatever the unfulfilled desires were that cannot be fulfilled still. And realize that it's all temporary, the good, the bad, the pain, even this life. I'm not going to be 27 again. I'm not going to relive the time I've spent making this video again. But I have to have equanimity. Equanimity means to be even. Equa, like equal. Equal preference in a sense. In the ultimate sense. Because my preference for A, eventually, when A gives way, needs to be able to shift to Z. Or rather, to transcend either A or Z. So at that point, I'll neither be, in my internal experience, old or young. I'll simply be. Whatever it is that I am at that moment, in a sense, without even labeling it. But so much as I am old, if I become old, then it's a matter of just being at that time without needing to be a kid again and without needing to be a little older and a little wiser. Equanimity. The ability to see things with clarity, divorce from preference in a sense. Though preferences can be healthy for the expression of your heart and your authentic you know, life on earth, equanimity is a must in terms of its natural development in your life and its ability to inform deeper and higher level preferences. So at such point at which you reach Z, we reach Z when you become older, your preference, instead of being a low level preference of getting Botox, becomes a high level preference of whatever else you may do in that other time that you're not sp spending on the Botox. Whatever joy people might get from you when you give a smile and it's authentic and it's not locked up with all this chemicals in your face. Whatever things end up happening as natural, natural things happen. You can focus on higher level things when lower level things go away. And then a deeper intelligence and wisdom informs the preferences. But you can't have that when you're so caught up at a low level of preference from A and Z. How do you find this equanimity? So that's the importance of the principle. How do you find it? By realizing this person, I'm, I'm talking about myself, but as far as you're concerned, this person is not you, absolutely. This person is perishable. Everything about this person's tastes, preferences is subject to partiality, is subject to the changing of the wind, it's subject to the earth, it's subject to other people around you, it's subject to the conditioning of your mind, of your brain. And it will not last forever. To be able to see beyond the timeline of your life, to see beyond you, to see beyond yourself, and your own preferences. Therein comes equanimity. And the attachments, the preferences, they fall away in natural course. Like if, if youth, youthfulness is just like hanging on to you and holding on to you, holding on to you, you can't shake it off. You wouldn't even, if you're attached to it, you won't allow yourself to shake it off. But if you simply elevate yourself, it can no longer hold you. It just falls away, and you're gone. You don't even know. You're in the stratosphere, and then it's somewhere that you can't even see, like an airplane. When an airplane's flying over a country, it can't see the ghetto. It can't see the traffic light. It can't see the mountains. It can't see the polluted rivers. It can't see the beautiful rivers. It can't see whatever's going on underneath it in any real sense. It's not affected by it, at least. It's just going, and that's where you are when you're transcended. So as an airplane, you're no longer, you're neither going through a green light nor stopped at a red. You've bypassed the entire mechanism completely. You're neither A nor Z, you're neither old nor young. 
you instead are at a higher plane. And that, 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 that was a pun, it wasn't intended. Um, and that comes through allowing equanimity. Therein lies a deeper serenity, a deeper beauty in life, whereby you don't need to manipulate your image to excess. You don't need to manipulate reality to fit you know, this extremely small set of preferences. Or by small, I mean small-minded. You know, and oftentimes the more intelligent somebody is, the more meaning the more complex their mind is, if they have a strong set of preferences which are not, which are based in ego and fear and so forth, it becomes a, a, a great vortex, a web, a matrix in their mind that they need to continue using all their intelligence to ensure that everything is exactly as they need it to be, when they don't even necessarily need any of that to begin with. But so, so much as the badness of that ends up affecting people, so much as you can see it in somebody else or in your own self, know that you, for your own self, have the power and the ability to undo that within yourself. And then you, yourself, the real you, the real you underneath the mind, underneath the preferences, underneath everything that's partial, underneath your conditioning, the real you, the awareness that's witnessing and perceiving, the awareness which is total and full, the, the awareness which is feeling everything that happens to you, you can shine through this person. So it comes from a realization that all of it's temporary. None of it is you in the ultimate sense. And then your real power can shine and you can shoot across like an airplane instead of like a car stuck at a red light.